I was out. Okay. Okay. No Hello. Uh, it's that's on. It's on. Everything oh. on. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for your concern. I, I'm okay. Just have a little procedure and got a really nice day off yesterday. You know, uh, at, at Jamie's place. No internet. Uh, not on social media. And just been really just been a uh, uh, relaxed and so. I changed the topic a little bit. Initially, I was going to talk. We're going to talk about the novelty and uh species and hybrid. Then, the more I realized when I get gathering the plan, I thought we would just focus on this species alone because uh, we do a lot of fan analysis uh, novelty species, and I know many of you have the the species with me. Uh, uh, Roger, can I have that? Yeah, that or the. The purple one, the purple one in the back. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Okay. So the definition of the novelty fan analysis. Oh, by the way, we we're not going to have a show until tomorrow. Uh, so you can uh, show until today. No, not show until today. Uh, so you can uh just stay stay with Jamie's uh uh jumper tomorrow. Okay. So I actually could get her, and I'm going to show you some. Uh, really nice looking print, and and I also gather some not so looking print, and I'm gonna explain to you what what causes of this. Uh, per, for example, one of the species. Uh, when I say when we say novelty phenomenon, we usually uh the summer blooming, and also these are the species coming from Southeast Asia. So remember, uh, if you've been to Think about this, you know, even if you've never been to Southeast Asia, the Indonesia, Malaysia, think about that homestead, South Florida, you know, not for Laudel, for the South, even for the homestead Florida is, is in the summertime. It's hot, warm day, and warm night. And that is their native uh, habitat. But that doesn't mean that we had to have, or they had to have that kind of temperature there. But as the weather is cooling off, you know, uh, we're still in our uh, fall weather here. But some of your folks at the northeast might be in is almost in a uh, winter mode already. So there is a simple thing that you need to be careful on this uh, novelty fan analysis. Well, first of all, a lot of your novelty fan analysis, for example, when uh, many of you have uh, tetrapyrus, you know. Uh, with a C1, okay, tetrapyrus with a spotted form, or the C1, the white, or the green, uh, they are going to, a lot of your novelty fan analysis, they've been flower all summer long. And unless, unless you are on the light grower, and, and prefer if you have Jeff like, uh, you are in. You have no problem because you, you right now in the winter time you can actually change it from sixteen hour down to about twelve hours a day, uh, and then if you have a sunny, have suggest a very good the padding uh, heat pad heat mat. Uh, you can get it from Amazon, but with the temperature control, uh, so you can actually with a long day. With the daylight, you can still have your fan analysis novelty species keep blooming all winter long. But most of us, including myself, uh, we have greenhouse, and we uh, there's no way we can have artificially have all greenhouse with that many uh, light in there. You know, electricity uh, is kind of expensive, and the setup is different. You know, if I build in another greenhouse, for example, uh, next year. I was I would invest on the top of the line where they have a you know LED light uh, under the gutter, so that way and also everything bottom heating, so I can have warmer day and night, warm warm day and warm night and also extend the deadline. But most of us like in in my in Southern California, for example, you're gonna experience. Tetrapyrus, for example, uh, you're gonna have. Oh, I call them. The, you know, they deserve a, a summer, a, a union break. Uh, Tetrapyrus, for example, 
they are going to you notice that they are less than this flower now okay and that's okay the tetrapus is one species that of all the novelty phenomenopsis i'm going to talk about the, the more cooler grower uh they actually enjoy they do not require as warm day or warm or cool warm night as the bonina or violets and other species they actually enjoy a little bit summer break right uh, winter break right now and cooler night temperature but this is the time on the uh, uh, tetrapus is time to uh grooming them because summertime when they were busy and i would do an inspection of the bottom leaf make sure because tetrapus for example the leaf and violets yeah, they tend to stick together just want to make sure they do not have any uh insect mini bar or sometimes mini bar may hide underneath there but they do a house cleaning and sometimes even if you got some mite uh infection the well, the mite infection once you're taken care of the the scar will be there so uh so this is actually very good um, i want to make sure that there's no all your scale here there's no uh, any inset here okay so this is tetrapus and depend on the tetrapus which species you have uh, this is the c1 uh, c1 you should let to have a little bit some uh, a break right now so and but if you Roger if you can look at the tips here they actually we still you still have to keep fertilizer could feeding them even in the win in this winter time the reason being if you forgot to feed them uh, and do a foliar feeding and uh, even though the moss is, is wet okay that today is cloudy today and we're gonna have probably a winter rain uh, coming so we're not gonna see any Sun for several days but next week is our feeding day so I will have my staff instead of feed the moss the moss is wet but I will still do a full um, our, our normal stocky nutrient where I will still do a feeding and make sure and if you do a mega dry too make sure you spray the foliage make sure you spray the flower the flower spike because they are getting ready for another showcase another wave and this is what nice about uh, tetrapus they actually of all the novelty phenomenopsis tetrapus will actually will keep booming after a, a little short break all winter long because that you're going to have another good three four months all the way to spring so make sure you for you feeding on your regular schedule even though it's a moss is still wet do a foliar feeding that's very important for you to continue to do that and so you can tell the difference between the leaf this is the alba form huh okay uh, don't ask me which number because we don't have show until today so i'm just going to be very so this is the alba form alba form of tetrapus is going and all this is, is going to be more compact and the flower and the nice thing about all our form this time of year because of cooler temperature they actually have more green Roger if you can see the back and actually the, you can actually see the green tips and that's the weather so if you I love about the alba when it's cold you actually have more green at the flower and they're gonna be more greenish when they open and then fade to white as they open up and depend on the strength this look at it when it first open alba in this winter time it's actually open up very really light green but this is not the uh, green form this is actually our sure alba form a again the alba form compared to the c1 variety so if you like something to be more compact the alba one whether it's benina alba tetrapus alba as a rule, urbanistic shape or form, or it can be more smaller print. 
smaller size of leaf and also shorter spikes okay so that might make the difference if you are going under the light And some of this, uh, this is another Bernina. Sururia. And at our nursery, we do a lot of Bernina Sururia. Uh, this is a Sururia in four inch pot. This is a Bernina Sururia still in three inch pot. So in the winter time, make sure you put all your two, three inch pot in the same area you definitely do not want to mix this one in the middle of all the smaller one because that otherwise this can be dry out faster versus this will take a couple months if you don't leave it out new england for a lot of uh, portland seattle uh it might take time about six to eight weeks to dry out unless you have the uh heat map okay so make sure you separate them but the banana suruya uh especially the the, the uh, strength from us we have developed a uh, uh, sinus suruya uh, they actually do not need as much warm uh we have the strength of the uh, variety suruya that this is n two four eight zero uh this strand actually will flower as low as 60 degree at night so this is why we're doing what we do here uh yes their native country are very warm and humid but because we've been doing breeding and doing selection uh according to our temperature here so a lot of us cannot afford to turn on the heat at 68 degree in a greenhouse uh so this is actually for us to so I'm make, uh, making solution and this has been this is another fresh of the winter and fall blooming look at this this is wonderful so and this is why the label is very important this is NF2480 uh, this is Norman strain my strain of Bolinas Sururia and you notice that my strain of Bolinas Sururia is also more compact Okay, and on uh, um, um, very small print, this print had two spike already. Okay, and once once they get into, and this is a different strand of Bolina Suria from Jaho, and there are some strand. This is the strand I would prefer. I would refer as the Austrian spike. So my strand is more shorter spike, but there are some strand of uh, the from Jaho Suria. They actually cross back with the uh, the jungle species, so the shape might not be as full, but they have really long spray. Look at this; it's winter time, and they still they're still going in the middle of the winter. Uh, our, this is actually uh, grow in the greenhouse only about uh, sixty degree at night only. Okay, see. This is from summer, and now this is why I, I say when you sh uh, use mega dry, make sure you spray the mega dry also on the tips because they love to have the extra stimulation from mega dry and they keep uh, arching. And at the same time, watch well, this this. Have you seen that a banana was sparking in the middle of the short day and cooler temperature? Okay, this is why. Uh, we we are so proud of our own breeding program by selection uh, by selection. So even though this is winter time, look at the leaf. It's shiny. The plant are active growing. Okay, and so this is what plant when they get to big bigger part like this. I will argue we will put in all the four inch part together, and you can you can side by side. Don't worry about the variety. You can actually ask me later. If you like something longer spike, we have something for you. This is the Borina Soruria, a shorter spike, actually same as this. So they never have really long spike. And one, two, three. 
this have four spike on them. And I would keep feeding them and water them. And if you can keep it a little bit warm, minimum, t minimum 60 degree at night or prefer the 62, and day temperature, a minimum of 75. The modern Bolina Sururia, especially from us, is actually capable of keep booming in the winter time. So this is why it's so exciting about uh, uh, the species program, uh, because uh, we, you can actually now come into our nursery and we have Bonina species, uh, whether it's uh, Bonina, regular Bonina or indigo strain. So we have 365 days a year. And that is going through with a breeding program and also very good diet, you know, the feeding program and the mega thrive. And this is really a, a combination of, you know, a lot of this species uh, in the wild, they don't got, rarely got some bird drop, uh, some of the nutrient. So they don't, might not flower as profoundly as, as ours. So this is what the advantages that we have in the collection. And Roger, can you have that banana in the back from Jamie? Yeah, in the back. Okay, and you can have that one back. No, no, that one, the purple. Okay, oh, yeah, I haven't finished the purple one yet. Okay, and this is the Bonina, the wild strain one from uh, Prince Orchid. Look at how beautiful the leaf. And this is winter time, and there's no, there's no break for them. Okay, I think this is one of the items that Jamie is releasing for her a jumper this Sunday. Wow, look at this. You know, I've been going Bolina for 30, 40 years, and you know, we finally got the program, the breeding program, the cultiva cultivation down to the science now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, so we're done with the Bolina Sururia type. What about the indigo type? Uh, indigo type is another wonderful uh, story. Uh, this is the indigo uh, strand that I've been carrying on from the HP Norton uh, first indigo strand. So we actually been outcross out, out with the indigo strand from another breeder from Japan. And so we always, in the breeding program, we always want to outcross because a lot of time when you keep inbreeding and inbreeding, you do not have a, a lot of, lot of uh, vigor. So the Norman's indigo strand, Valencia indigo strand is such a uh, the work of H.P. Norton, uh, work from North Carolina, and another uh, private breeder in Japan. And because in Japan in 80, they import a lot of species from Michael Oi uh, of Malaysia. So they have actually had their own breeding program over there in Japan. And what I like about the Japanese strand, because they are the temperature over in Japan is cooler, always colder, and their their winter time they don't their light intensity is darker, so their plant usually are more compact, and leaf is always runner, they don't get as big, and they are very more more vigorous and and also they are more cold tolerant. They don't require as much cold because when they imp were first import a lot of orchid from Malaysia. Uh, species from Bolina or Valencia, uh, with jungle plant. So obviously some of the plant will die. Whatever survive will actually become, get used to the Japanese shorter day, shorter night, and a lower light, lower light intensity, like Seattle or Portland. So, and the third strain that we, onto this is the, my good friends, uh, Bolina from Jiaho Orchid from Taiwan, Central Taiwan. So by mixing it up, we I create this new line of, of Bolina. I call it uh, Norman Strand. Uh, the nice about this Norman Strand is uh, this is the we have the this is the bigger size. Uh, Jamie can it's been offering some of the jumper, but we also you can go also get it from the west side for the smaller plant. But the Bolina from Norman Strand 
have the capacity because the Japanese cool grower, they actually keep booming. They actually, they still developing flower spike. So this is going to get into the achievement of winter booming Valencia and Berlina. And so this is, this is another a attempt. Uh, so this is why a lot of times, you know, we, we, we charge a little bit higher money for our Berlina, but uh, not all, not everything is created equal. Uh, the pedigree, if you like, if you are, when you go buy horses, for example, or you buy, buy if you buy some uh, imp, uh, orchid, uh, the dog, for example, you want some really the, the pedigree, so that some of the good breeder will have better gene control and pest and disease resistant. All right, so I'm gonna return this to Roger and borrow this from him. And another wonderful species that I, if you don't have is the Venosa. And Venosa is another wonderful uh, novelty species. Excuse me. I had to keep myself hydrated. Uh, Venosa is one of the, the species that actually their peak season for flowering is not in the summertime. It's very different than the, the, their cousin, uh, Emboriensis. Its peak season actually is now. Uh, or they will go and in, this is the species. In the summertime when it's warm day and warm night, this is the species love to do keiki. It's a basal keiki. Okay, so as the weather is cool now, they actually wake up now. So by waking up mean, they actually put in a new spike. Okay. And continue to rebloom from the old spike. So Venosa is a, another wonderful, for sure, winner if you want something to flower in the winter time. And I want to show you how dry we keep it. We actually, in a lot of the novelty fan analysis, most key people are tend to overwater the novelty phalaenopsis species. So the, the trick on the novelty phalaenopsis in the winter time, remember, less is more. I rather you doing less of water. And if you, Roger, can you call this? This is actually very dry. Okay, and the, the dry from bottom up, and this is become all white now. And yet, this is still very, very good. I can, this is actually ready to water next week now because this is become very all white now. So this is the case, I had a uh, soak in the water. So this is what the nice about the moss is, is actually can lift the pot by, by the weight. Okay, so this is the one. Well, if the weather is like this today, it's overcast, cloudy, uh, and so we, when that happened, the humidity in the greenhouse will increase. So they're not losing as much water. If I don't have time to water the plant, this is the example that I can let, actually let them go another week, up to another week, but only pending. Um, my greenhouse condition is uh, overcast, cooler day temperature, and, and cooler. So, and for Venosa, is another species like Tetraperus. You can actually tolerate a cooler day temperature and night temperature. Okay. There's another sp novelty species that is love the winter time. Is Phalaenopsis gigantea. This is gigantea from Indonesia. Okay, gigantea. Uh, this is not alba one. Alba one will be half of the size and it's blooming size. This is the regular size from. Uh, Bronio. Okay. Even though this is a species from Indonesia, but Phalaenopsis gigantea is actually like a cooler and shadier. So if you have gigantea hybrid, okay, the most people mistake the gigantea giving too much sun and too much heat. They thought, oh, I'm going to put it hot hot spot whether it's winter time or summertime. No, this is actually found another jacket here in the wind in the summertime. Uh, when it's hot, we actually put this at the coldest spot, coolest spot of the greenhouse. That is where the pad, the, the wet pad, 
where the cool air coming up, cool and moist. Because where they come from, especially on the, on the higher altitude, they're not on the sea level. And they're also in a very, very dense forest. So they do not appreciate really bright light. So the trick on the, the Jacantia in the winter time, again, they will be slowing down. The, in, in fact, they only take, it takes about eight months to put up a leaf this big. So they might take up, put up a leaf maybe once a year for the big size like this. So just make sure, put the Jacantia or some of you Jacantia primary hybrid will be the same thing. Shady location for them. Uh, doesn't have to be as warm as Bernina or Valencia. So you understand your own growing environment. So if you have an area, maybe too close to the window, that is too cold for Bernina or Valencia. I was at Jamie's house yesterday and her glass window, uh, her area that is you know, really close to the, the glass window. Uh, what you call that? The, the greenhouse. greenhouse. The greenhouse window, yeah. It's really cold because uh, it, that uh, that's and so I actually move some of her Berlina away from that glass window, and on, on the contrary, you can put some of the the standard type, the big Fernandosa type, like this type. Put it close to the uh, the glass window to get the cold treatment. Okay, so Berlina and uh, Jack and Tia put it in the shadier and cooler location. And I, went, I actually went to see the, one of the greenhouse, and I'm gonna show you what happens when the Fernandosus Bernina or the Navati actually go in too cold. Roger, you wanna see this? See down here? This is actually in my Catalina greenhouse. And the Catalina greenhouse, that is our, our, what we call the intermediate greenhouse and it went down to 48 degree for a couple of weeks. The plants okay because it's short period of time. But when there's the low temperature, uh, if you go in the greenhouse, they have condensation. So this is the condensation. So this is why we, all the, all the one in that warm career house, because they love, that house is so warm and humid in the summertime. So we put a lot of Berlina over there in the summertime. But we forgot to move this back. So this is not sure. Every spot here is where the water come down. And, but you notice that they, they're not spreading. Okay, that's because remember we always have Fison solution. So the Fison that should prevent it and they become a localized problem. Okay, but it's not very ornamental. So uh, it's very actually to prevent any problem. I'm actually going to uh, almost like surgery. You cut them off because I don't like this. Okay. One, one of the reasons I like to put it in a warm house, because a lot of time, in a warm day, warm night, they give you a lot of cakey. Roger, can you see this one here? This is such a cakey and cakey. They have total of three print now. Okay, so this is the cakey. And this is why we put it in the warm career house. Warm day and warm night, if you want to get multiple plants, and that's, that's why I put it in the Catalina house. And this is the time to start training them. Voila. So this is actually can re, uh, physically remove. And another thing about what I'm doing to do next, in addition to regular once a month, five cents, all is it's actually a good insurance. Uh, we next week, all our orchid going to spray with five times solution, the copper fungicide. Copper 
five times solution. We'll take care of some of the the cold growing the in a, in the in the winter time when it's get cold and 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 cool day and cool night. You're gonna have different disease problem and versus the summertime. So every application, this is what happens when you have a lot of orchid like myself. So we usually do a bite every six months. We do a spray of five ton, twenty-seven. So five is a copper base. It will take care of your bacteria and scale, but the bacteria and five five junk, uh, five fungi. I'm sorry, we got a lot of uh, going on here. Can we? I. Shh. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, so, it, again, this is a, a nice and wet because they were in the greenhouse where it's really cool. So, they're not going to dry out. So, all of this, I'm going to move into the warmer area. So, this is why in the summer, if you are go, if you have under light, or if you have greenhouse, it's actually uh, if you want to have a really good production of the flower, is to get this the heat map with a control, and you can dial out at minimum sixty-eight degree, and they will continue to have flower for you for the novelty genesis. And this is the one, another one. Ooh, look at this. Uh, I'm trying to. I'm still part trying to propagate this. This is from. The wild strand of the Phalaenopsis bonina. Okay, we grow a lot of this bonina uh, wild strand. We probably about we probably have about five hundred to a thousand plant in you know in the, the last couple of years, and then out of the population, this is not this is actually we we found. There's three of them that come out to be the pink one. Not only is pink and little sepal, it's part of best. So this is a hybrid or not line breeding. We did not breed for the uh, pink. This is actually a chance mutation of the wild strain of this arrested form. So this is very exciting. And we also notice the leaf uh, color is different. They tend to be a little bit lighter yellow, lighter green on this. So we've been busy trying to selfing and sibering and possible us uh, if we can find the extra flower spike, maybe even tissue culture. So uh, if you can wait, uh, I will. We we will have the this strength for for us. Uh, there, there are some so-called Bolina pink, but they actually is a, it's not really from the the. This is actually a lot more stable versus the so-called hype the the sibling or the pink version. A lot of this pink version, uh, we purchased actually from the grower before, and I was really disappointed because maybe majority from the flower they just white. Uh, so they did not have a pink, and that alone, they will not have this wild form. The flower is huge. This is actually look at the size of the banana, suruya. This is like orchid on steroid. So this is probably the best when you have a mutation from the wild. It's the best. And Roger, can you look at the back of the flower? It is beautiful, even in the back. This is just a cl as close to true Bolina in a while. Okay, so this is it. Just be patient. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Unfortunately, they don't grow that fast in there. How are we doing on the uh, on the lesson so far? Okay, a little bit sorry, a little bit disorganized. Just love the uh, love this novelty fan analysis in the in the, in the winter time. Okay, so in the winter time, a lot of people think, oh, this, even though it's cooler day, shorter day, short day temp, uh, short day on the light, 
but you still need to feed them and take care of them right now to build out the energy for the summer next year. They're, they're going to have a big flush this next summer. So what, what the feeding that you gave them and the care that you, you gave them right now is actually prepare them for the next summer. But, and, but also, with proper care, you will, they still will reward you with continued flowers in the winter time. All right. So this is this is a diff this is another another different strand of the Berlina. I tend to use a lot of Berlina, for example, because that's uh, probably the, the the most famous of all the novelty. Once you can go Berlina, you can go all kind of uh, novelty. Okay. So here's another one. Uh, Okay, it's dry. It's bone dry, but the plant is okay. So it's in the winter time at the novelty fan now. So you see how dry they are. This is definitely a water. I'm gonna soak in the water after the talk. But this is the time in the winter time. It's better keep it on the dry side than over water. And I just I frame it already. So in the this is the, in the winter time. It's also the time to cut trim off. A lot of this this. arrow root that from the summertime because they, they have extra humidity if they're not thriving and this you can cut them off and this is also the time look at it some of the older leaf or the spike would, and then definitely you should not and repot any of your novelty species in the winter time I don't care if there's no root yes there is root uh, you just don't water as much, okay? There's more damage to the plant if you repot it this time of the year. So it's better to leave it on the drier side. So this is why a lot of time there's so totally many different strands. This is another wild strand, but depending on where they come from, some of the wild strands have beautiful traditional bolina round leaf. Okay. Okay, here's another one. We have so many plants, so we actually do not have uh, the, uh, uh, the time to do it. Uh, this is the time. I'm going to show it to you. Look at it. Some of this is a really old spike. Time to trim, do some uh, trim, trimming. But do not cut off the, the yellow leaf yet. Okay, even sometimes if we cut the uh, yellow leaf, uh, I usually, for me, this is the change in the season. They actually gradually is turning the leaf to yellow, just like the tree will fall off. In the, in the fall, we have tree falling off. Orchid and the plant do the same thing too. So I will rather than gradually uh, turn yellow, they can send some of the nutrient back to the mothership. And this is the, it, this is the result of the, the summer. Okay, you can always want to do your house cleaning get the get the sprayer I love the chloras wipe because they have alcohol in there and this is the time to do it. you can do it get close and personal with you Belina. oh now if you have been doing this all summer because what happened is this is a lot of honey a lot of a lot of the plant itself produce a lot of honey so the black is a mildew they were actually trying to eat the honey so there's not something that we always the clean the print before we ship up but this is the print that actually is in my own personal collection <laughs> so you'd be surprised actually it's the personal collection actually is the one that leads one to got taken care of. Okay, so this is the one. Of, this is one of the plant that we got. We use for breeding, and okay. So always make sure. I do not like to spike the the banana to all the way to forty five degree. I like it. Let it let it uh, 
step up naturally. Now, now another way to prevent from the get too close uh, in the summertime or winter time, you can actually can, can the, remember the style from peanut from your unpacking. In, I've seen people sp spiking them with 45 degrees and it's just not pretty. Uh, if you don't want to have the mildew forming, get the style from peanut and form it here so they will not have, they will not touch the leaf. And actually it will make a presentation even prettier. Okay. Ooh. So Bonina actually, if you're going to take an orchid to orchid show or present it or before you take photograph, make sure you always clean up. And I, I love this Corax. Uh, Corax, uh, this impressive wife, uh, it's actually very good. You can actually uh, do a good job. Uh, they not only dissolve all the hard fertilizer deposit, it actually kind of disinfects your orchid too. It, it can kill all uh, the uh, virus, protein and contact and fungi. Okay. And some of the species, this is the Modesta. Okay. Now, if you have Modesta, this is the one that lovely species from Southeast Asia. The one that smells like grape. Okay. All right. They are going to, uh, they actually do not flower that much in the summertime when it's hot. And this is just like Venosa. Now, those are is a species that it, they can rebloom. And they are going to have another fresh of season from this from fall to spring so they frost several times a year on and off on and off so you have Modosa, uh, Modesta uh, make sure I was usually either Modosa sometimes they if you have spiking make sure they sometimes the spike might go inside the pot so you want to make sure bring them up uh, but I will use a wire to pump up a little bit okay so that way they, they will not go inside the pot. But this is Notosa, Motesta, I'm sorry. Motesta is a species that will actually go in another blooming season for you. And here's another case. And what I like about, I'm gonna show this. Tell me what's wrong with this. You see the, you see the two, two tone color? Here, okay. Well, there's nothing wrong with there's nothing wrong with this plant uh, because I know where I grow them. This is the signs of in the summertime when we get in too much sun. There's too too much heat. Uh, remember, phalaenopsis. Some of the novelty phalaenopsis, Bonina, Valencia, Notosa, and Boreensis, the thin leaf. Okay, so this is the case. They got too much sun. Uh, this is not a uh, nutrient deficiency, but I know, do know this area. Uh, they got some sun damage. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing you can do. Once they have a sun damage, it's almost that you, uh, you just leave it alone. And hopefully, by providing a good care, and they're going to have another new leaf coming up for next spring. And then they will cover this. But this is why I say I don't not use all water here. Everything here is the California tap water in Los Angeles. And that I say that over the wind over the summer I'm gonna get lots of this calcium deposit because I'll, we had in down Southern California we had to import a lot of water from Colorado. So by the time they, the water coming down all the way across so many states the water become very, very organized and have a lot of salt content. And so this is the time, you know, if you are so lucky, it, like in New York, Hudson River, oh, the water is really nice. And you are, if you like living full out of Oregon, they have wonderful water too. So you never had to worry about this. But this is the time also to get to clean the leaf and also inspect the leaf. See, uh, this is another banana. Soruria will keep booming for you. So, if we follow 
this rule, less water, by grouping all your two inch part and the four inch part. Do not mix them, okay? Measure all the mass is in one section. If you have some orchid it's been changed to orchid bar, that's okay. Make sure they are do, it, do not put the bark and the moss together. Okay, so separate them. Moss in one area, bark in er one area. The one in the bark in the winter time is gonna dry out faster for you. But so that means, or if you go under light, you gotta make sure you keep up with the watering. Okay, they like it moist. Also, keep up with the regular scheduling. Once a month, we use five cent solution as a drench the leaf and into the soil even though the moss that weak might be moist and that's okay you can, if you want the fison solution to go down into the very wet moss to disinfest the pollen media and then when there's time for feeding the normal socket food is very good for foliar instead of if moss is wet Okay, you can do a foliar feeding, and but it's okay to have some fertilizer into it because once a month when we do the watering, we do a leach. Even in the winter time, it's very important you do a leach. Make sure when you water the from the top, do it twice until the water drain from the bottom, and do it again. That will leach out all the extra salt they might not use, and a lot of stuff or a lot of time the salt damage or salt accumulation. It's actually more in the winter time versus the summertime because in the summertime they can use all the nutrient they have because there's there's a lot of light, a lot of temp, uh, heat. But in the winter time, they actually uh, benefit from more leaching to use leach out all the extra salt. Okay, and so if you have any mite damage in the summer, I know everybody have mite damage. It's a good news. The temperature, when the temperature cooler, the humidity increase, the mite is not going to be active. Okay, we bring in the mite when we walk on the grass or on the lawn. So the mites, if you've got it taken care of, do not get discouraged. At the bottom of the leaf, if do if you do not see any orange spot, the orange spot is the eggs. Okay, those are live. You. By this time, if you got, if you've been spraying me, uh, alcohol, whatever the systematic fungus are, pesticide, they all become dry and white, and that is the scar, the gift from mite. Don't worry. Eventually, when the new leaf coming up, okay, the bottom, those leaf at the bottom, will dry off and recover. You can have another uh, nice healthy plant. So. Uh, Inside is part of uh, we inside the part we had to spray inside here because it was so dry here. But we can we can do it carefully. We uh, follow this if you've uh, been following my uh, lecture for a long time. Preventative is better than the uh, the been trying to spray a lot of the chemical. And I do not like to spray because I work in the greenhouse seven days a week. But uh, we always use caution. So I'm I'm not sure. So behind the scenes, I know people want me to recommend. My lawyer will hate it, <laughs> uh, but we actually want to recommend something that we, we can uh, more save uh, the use at home, but still can use be good um, uh, taking uh, the pest. But I don't like to recommend anything that I haven't used myself. So don't worry, behind the scene, you know, you should see I have about 20 different types. There's some, some organic uh, GMO, or the, or the, not GMO, but the some of the, uh, the material being used by the organic farmer. Uh, this looks some promise. And I have a friend who I uh, have grown up in the uh, marijuana industry. They cannot use any pesticide or fungicide. So a lot of research is actually being funded by the, by the uh, uh, canopy uh, business. So that is something to look forward. Uh, there's some beneficial insect uh, program, but it's kind of hard to uh, to work it if you're at a home situation, unless you uh, have a nice uh, a greenhouse and you can control it, and also you cannot spray if you do put in beneficial in insect in there, then you cannot spray 
any pesticide at all. So that can be a problem also. So the, the, the tech, the, it's not quite there yet on the uh, beneficial insect, but the best way is you can actually prevent a lot of this pro uh, problem by communicating with your plant, observe your plant, space them, you know, spacing them more. Do not overcrowd it. I know we have, we all guilty myself to overcrowd it, you know, in the summertime when they're active growing season, to space them, air circulation, 24 hours, air circulation, okay? So this actually, you know, I always remember, remember what I say about this uh, philosophy of orchid growing, less is more, less is more, but spend more time to inspect and uh, observe your plant and uh, prep like this, oh, another old leaf. Any of the old leaf and the old spike, when they dry out like this, they're going to start decay. And when they start decaying, guess what? Have to have fungi involved. So that's how, it, by removing a lot of this uh, potential host for fungi uh, and possible bacteria, almost like a host, almost like host uh, cleaning, keep the growing area clean. Okay, so uh, this will complete uh, today's session on the winter care of the novelty species. Uh, Jamie will be back next week and I think she have a program for something going on next weekend. Uh, and Jeff will be back, so 